Hey guys, it's Landon Blake from Redefined Horizons, and this is a little set of videos I'm going to do. This is the first video in a little set. This is going to show you how to create a brand new document template in Scribus and then lay out an article in Scribus. Scribus is an awesome open source desktop publishing tool. It's a little bit like Microsoft Publisher or... Uh, Adobe InDesign and I use it for all the PDF publications that I produce at Redefine Horizons almost all of them I do a few of the more complicated ones in Inkscape but uh, Scribus is definitely if you have text heavy documents without uh, you know a lot of a custom interaction between text and graphics uh, Scribus is a great tool so I'm using version 1.53 of Scribus you can just download it from the internet and I've opened up the program here and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to click on a new document here and I'm going to choose letter here portrait letter so eight and a half by eleven and the uh, units is inches now if you just install the program this might come up with some metric defaults I can't remember but once you set it to uh, American American or Imperial units it should it should keep those now down here on the margins I'm gonna change these to five inch margins okay all right and we'll say okay so what we have now is a blank document okay the very next thing I do is I go in and set up some of my uh, some of the, the other settings in the document now the most important one for me is under guides okay and what we want to do here is we want to create a baseline grid okay the baseline grid essentially allows your text to line up across the document and so it's very important and almost everything I do has a baseline grid if you're if you're doing a text-based document like a newspaper or magazine you want a baseline grid so what we need to do is we need to set our our spacing here for our grid now this gets a little bit tricky because most fonts are sized in in what they call points which is a graphic unit and our grid here is in um, inches although you can see right here they do they actually do have points uh, but you know we're laying out most of our grid in inches so what I like to do is just there's a quick way to do the conversion so if you just open up your browser and search for points per inch, it'll tell you there's 72 points per inch. So in a quarter inch, there's 18 points. And so that's generally a good value for me, that, it, uh, that 18 points. That's a good value for the spacing on the baseline grid. So I'm going to go ahead and enter that and say, OK. Oh, uh, let's see. Something didn't work there. This is a little bit different than... Oh, here we go. So we're going to say baseline grid we want to be visible. Okay. <laughs> it still didn't work. Uh, let's see. Guides. Baseline grid is 18. Visibility is on. We'll move baseline grid up to the top. <laughs> yeah, it should be showing those lines. So I'm not sure what's going on there. Let me pause the video for a minute. Yeah, I'm not sure why that baseline grid is come is isn't showing up. So we'll have we may have to fiddle with that some more. I think it's still going to work for the layout of the text though. So that's basically it. Just go in and set up my uh, baseline grid there in the documents, and then we're just, I'm going to save this and I'm going to call it uh, article template. The file extension for Scribus is this .sla. Say OK. All right, the very next thing I like to do is go in and set up my colors. So we'll say edit colors and fills. And let's see, you know what? That's not the one we want. Let's try edit. 
Uh, yeah, that is the one I want. All right, let's see. Okay, so if you click in here, it'll activate. I'm, I hesitate a little bit because I'm in a, 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 a development version of Scribus and some of this interface has changed. So what we want to do is we just want to add a, a few colors. Now, this article template I'm making is from my website, laneandblake.com. So I'm just going to call these colors. I'm going to prefix them with the LB. And I know I've got a blue there, so we'll say LB blue. And then uh, we'll go ahead and set the values here. Now, I don't work in CMYK. That's a color model that printers use. I'm more of an RGB guy myself, so I'll change the color model there. Okay, and what I want to do is I want to pick a color scheme here that matches my website. So let me show you how to do that. So if you just search for colors from website, I like this site here, Color Combos. We can grab that link, that top link there. <laughs> And it's going to let us grab colors from a website. So it says enter your URL here. Here's my website, my personal website. I want to grab this blue color off of here and see if I can make a, get a color template that works with that. So we'll go ahead and drop that in and we'll say get. We'll see what it comes up with here. And if I don't like the colors this comes up with, we can always use a tool like Adobe Cooler. K-U-L-E-R and come up with the color scheme. All right, so here's the color scheme it picked. And I think that blue I'm using is this blue probably. And uh, so you can see it gives me the, the, the hex color code here, which is what I want. So I'm actually going to copy that, and I do not like this scheme they gave me. It's got way too many colors. So then we're just going to Search for a Doobie Cooler. It'll bring this up, this color wheel. And what we're going to do is come down and in this middle, there's five colors laid out here in this middle one. We're just going to come down to that, where that asks for that hex code, and we're going to enter that and hit, and hit the, we're going to paste that and hit the enter key. And so now it's coming up with a, with a couple, uh, it gives you some options here for some color schemes. I almost never use analogous. Those are kind of fairly close colors. Um, I like triad, and I also like uh, complementary. Um, let's see. I think I like the triad one on this. Um, I like this set of colors here. So you can see they've got the red, green, blue values listed on all these colors. So I'm going to pull this off. You won't be able to see it. But now, now I can enter these red, green, blue values. So we'll type these in. And I'm only going to do a handful of colors. I try to limit my colors in a document to three or four. So we won't need to go crazy here. And I'm going to call this LB primary blue. Okay, then I'm going to add another one, and we're going to call it LB light blue. And again, we'll switch the color model. And I'll enter these. Red, red, green, blue values from a, the Adobe Color Wheel. And we're just going to add two more. So we're going to do LB dark green. And we're going to do an LB light green. Got to hit that tab key twice, by the way, when you're tagging, uh, toggling between the input boxes here for the red, green, red, green, blue values. All right, so that's four colors. That's a pretty good palette. I'm happy with that. Uh, so I'm going to say, okay, so my colors are set now, and now I want to go in and set my uh, type topography styles. And the reason I do the colors first is so that we can uh, assign the colors to the different topography styles we want. And I always start down here with uh, uh, with character styles. So we'll say a new, new character style. And um, I always name these the same, but you can name them however you like. So I like to do a body regular. Now I'm trying out a couple new fonts. These are both free fonts from Behance the graphic design site Behance, and uh, 
So we, I may not like these, but we're going to try them out. So the first one is called, oh, now I don't remember. Let me see what that one's called. Panagram Sands. And I'll, I'll put a link to these fonts in the video for you guys, too. And, I'm, and, and we'll link to this temp template, too. Okay, so here's Pan, um, let's see. That may not be the right font. Let's see. Yeah. Nope, that is it. Okay, so that's the font. Um, 12 is a good height for now. 12 points. We may come back and change that. And uh, I'm going to leave this text black. I usually leave my body text black. Okay, then I'm going to... Um, we're going to clone that. Sorry, I'll try not to say um too much. Or okay. I'm working on that. We're going to name this new character style body bold. So I usually do a regular and a bold. Uh, we're going to make that bold. We'll leave it at 12. You know what? I might bump that up just to a couple points. Okay, and we're still going to leave that black. And then I'm going to do one more since I have a font that supports it. So when you're choosing fonts for a document like this, you want to choose a body font that has uh, some built-in, lots of built-in styles. So you can see it's got several here, this font. So don't don't choose a font with just one style because then you're not going to be able to do these different options. And this actually doesn't have an italic. Um, so I'm going to make, I'll call it body light. And we'll probably use that in the footer for the page number possibly. And I'm going to say uh, apply. I'm actually going to give this one a color. So we're going to call, we're going to make it the light blue. We'll hit apply. Okay, now I'm going to do just a couple more. Uh, I'm going to do title. Uh, we'll call this main title. Okay, and I've got another new font I'm using. Uh, we're we're going to try out. Uh, this one's called MD Tall. So let's see if I installed that correctly okay so here's MD tall and uh, it's only got one style but that's okay typically for a display font for your titles and um, I'm gonna go ahead and set that to 24 points we'll see how that looks okay and I'm gonna set this to a color we'll do the primary blue on this one and we'll hit apply. All right, so we're going to start with those styles. Now, you also need to create paragraph styles. So we'll, we'll go ahead and do that. And I just named my paragraph styles the same. So we're going to call this body regular. And right here, this is really important. We're going to say align to baseline grid. We want to use that baseline grid that we've got. And then in character style, you're going to say uh, we want this to be based on body regular. And we'll hit apply. Okay, we'll clone that, and we're going to say uh, body bold. We'll grab the body bold. Oh, I don't see body bold. I lost it. So let's make this body light. And. We need to align it to the baseline grid, sorry. Yep, align a baseline grid. Okay, so that's done, so we'll hit apply. Now, I don't know why, but I lost my body bold style here, so I, I must have uh, edited when I meant to copy. So let's say, um, click on body regular, say clone, and we'll do body bold. And we'll make that 14, and we're going to make that bold, hit apply, okay. All right, so now we can add that, uh, we can add that paragraph style. And you're going to see why we need the paragraph style in addition to the character style in a minute. Uh, da, da, da. Again, make sure that's set to align the baseline grid. 
Okay, so that's done. So I'm going to go ahead and, oh, we got one more we need to do. At least one more. So we're going to say new paragraph style. This is going to be main title. And the character style. is main title and we're going to align it to the baseline grid okay and i've actually got one more because i'm going to use this in the footer i believe so i'm going to say um, we're going to do new paragraph style i'm going to call this footer they call this um, usually call this footer right because it's going to be um, right justified and the character style can be this body light and then over here it is going to align to the baseline grid like the others but uh, we're going to give it a right justification and i'll probably use that for my page number you'll see why in a minute okay so then we'll apply that all right so we uh we set up our document our baseline grid we created our colors and we have our text styles. so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to come in and we're going to start laying out some text boxes and uh, some image boxes and we'll start adding some content so you guys can see how that works so I'm going to stop the video now. We're at about, uh, we're a little over 15 minutes, and we'll see you guys in the second video.